Darrell Lewis, thanks for coming to Tech hey, Life TV, great to be man. here. Great to be here. Hey, man, got you on board here to uh, talk about LISP. Um, LISP, there's a little bit of confusion about what it is, and some folks think it's really too uh, complex. Um, what is it? LISP is a protocol that's uh, designed by Cisco. Whoops, stop. Protocol designed by Cisco sounds proprietary. Uh, the great thing about LISP, I think it's one of its strongest points, is that it's an open protocol. Cisco has no intellectual property on it. Uh huh. Cisco is developing it out in the public. We invite our competitors. We invite other users to contribute to it. Okay. And it's based on an open standard in the ITF, an Internet Engineering Task Force. So, oh, really? Yeah, oh, well, absolutely. that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, so what problems does it solve then? So LISP is designed to solve the route scalability problem or the fact that the Internet routing table is growing at an uh, at a, at a ever-growing rate. Let's look at the slide here. I think you sure. brought a slide for us yeah. to take a look at. So um, what, yeah, what this slide tries to do is it tries to explain what the problem is and what are the sources of the problem. Uh -huh. So we have this Internet routing table, and it's growing you know, up and to the right ever bigger, yeah. and what we want to do is we want to keep sites from adding more and more routes to it as more and more sites multi-home, Yeah. right? So we think multi-homing is an attractive thing for a site. We want them, we, Cisco, our, we're a network company, we want people to use and, and live and die by the network. And so we think it's important that we let them do this without putting any more pressure on the size of this routing table. So two questions I have for you then. Um, the, don't we already solve this problem with BGP? Right. BGP is how sites multi-home today. Large sites like Cisco.com does or Facebook or, you know, any large company. And what LISP enables to do is to give these benefits of multi-homing, uh, failover, uh, capacity planning and engineering. We want to give all those benefits to a smaller market base where, that, where it's simpler and easier for them to deploy and they don't have to spend, have a PhD in B, BGP configuration in order to deploy it. Well, let me tell you, man, if, you, if you've been through a BGP configuration working with a fire, that's a real pain. At the yeah, absolutely. Setup. So that, that, now that's question number two because you led right into it, to it really perfectly is that are we really honestly seeing uh, multi-homing uh, move out of the enterprise area and go more down towards uh, the, the medium-sized customers, the smaller-sized customers? Because we're, we're all dependent upon the Internet now. I right. mean, that's how we're getting a lot of our business. Right. So are we really seeing multi-homing become such a factor that it's now available to the majority of businesses out there? Right. I think that multi-homing is attractive for business for a couple of different reasons. First of all, they can get more capacity. They, they, you know, We want uh, uh, to see people uh, get more out of the Internet video, web 2.0, oh, life yeah. of the internet, a lot of more traffic for the internet. So the other factor is, is that because the internet's so important to small businesses that have an online presence, they want it to be available in case their provider link goes down um, and they, they still want their businesses to go you know, back man. and forth and date, uh, from day to day. Okay. All right, so, so we see the problem. Now, what's the solution here? Because, you know, it, it, it still seems like, okay, well, it seems, seems like I still got to have a big honking router, right. a great big routing table. Um, I, I get the problem here. Well, how, how we, what, what does LISP do to solve the problem? Sure. So what LISP tries to do is take these routes that people are injecting into the Internet and remove them. Okay. And so if the route's not in the Internet, how does the site find it? That's the, that's the biggest single question. Oh, yeah. And what we do with LISP is that we, we have a map and cap function. And so what we try and do is we try and uh, remove these from the tables from the routes, and we put them in a mapping system. And then we have the sites... Uh, we, the sites over here, it queries the, this site to find the mapping, and then the mapping's returned back to the original site. Are we adding, so if we're querying sites like that back and forth, um, are we adding any extra latency on the network then? Uh, we add latency for the very first time a site wants to talk to the other site. Then all the other times that the site talks to the site over and over again throughout the course of the day, that's exactly the same as it is today. Now, so... I want to take a step back here because you, when we were talking about this earlier. Uh, one of the things that we were talking about is how big the routing table size has grown. Right. And I'm, I'm like, man, it's just, it's just massive now. And you made a comment to me that I really never put together um, is, is that not only that, but you've got to keep that routing table in multiple places. Sure. So it's not just the routing table that exists in the router software. The routing table gets pushed into the forwarding information base of the router, the actual hardware of the router. Mm -hmm. And so as the speeds and feeds get faster, it gets more and more expensive for us to provide those speeds and feeds to our customer. And therefore, the Internet as a whole becomes more expensive to operate. Right, that's true. So by making the Internet cheaper to operate, we're also pr making the customers get cheaper Internet access. Wow, that's pretty cool. Well, We, we, we almost have a real, well, it was very rare, win-wins, where it's sure. a win for the customer, a win for the provider. Yeah, absolutely. That's, the, that's our goal is to have in deployment incentives for the customers so they get easier, simpler multi-homing, and for the provider so they, they get a cheaper, easier-to-operate core. 
Okay, let's let's let's, let's roll on. This is sure. groovy. Let's go through the life of a packet here. Oh, so I love life of a packet. Yeah. So what we have here is a source, and this is a PC sitting at a list site. This PC is the same as it is today. There's no list doesn't change the hosts. List makes no changes to the site. They have the same QoS, the same uh, security. Uh, systems that, that they have today, they use the same firewalls and switches. What list changes is these edge routers, these uh, say ISRs or ASRs that are running at the edge uh -huh. of the site. And what we have here in this example is a site that looks up to a destination in DNS. Yeah. And then it uh, sends a packet to the um, edge of its network, uh -huh. as it does today. And what happens at the edge of this network is that this list router has a mapping for the destination. Okay. And this mapping is controlled by these ETRs. And in this case, they've set the priority to 50-50. So they want both of these links to be used by the site. Load balance out. Right, exactly. Well, not load balance, I guess, just sharing. Load so leveling, right? Load leveling, thank mm -hmm. you, yes. So when this is, uh, when S2 encaps this packet, what it does is it keeps the original packet the same, and then it puts a new outer header. And this new outer header has the destination of the location of, of this destination site. Okay. And this routing locator, as we call it, is going to deliver this packet to that specific router interface right there. Okay. And that ensures that it's delivered to the right place. Uh -huh. And then the packet's decapsulated, exactly. And then the original packet sent by S is now delivered to D. That's pretty darn cool. So... Um so is this more of a, we're saying protocol here, but it almost sounds like we're talking about an overlay. It is. It's over the top. What, what's nice about Lisp is that a site can decide to use Lisp and decide to talk to other Lisp sites or to non-Lisp sites, and it makes that decision on its own. So it That's goes cool. over the top. That has a couple of really interesting things. So I'm now independent of my providers, but a key thing is, is that I can use V6 here. I can make that IPv6, and this could be v6, and I can make this core still be IPv4. That is pretty darn cool. Yeah, it's really nice. So Lisp is designed for v4 and v6. To we're, we're protocol agnostic. We want the internet to thrive no matter what, whether it's a v4 internet or a v6 internet. In fact, we want to help sites move from one to the other and to be able to communicate with each other over either v4 or v6. So when um, so, so let me ask you this, because you've been involved from the ground up sure. with Lisp, um, is, uh, and, and I'll be, be pretty frank about it, so it, it, was it designed for v4 and then ported to v6? No, we've actually got support for v6 into Lisp from day one, uh, oh, no our both in the protocol specification and in our implementation. Sure enough. Right? And we've got active v4 and v6 sites out on the internet today using Lisp. No kidding. Well, yep. that, is, that is pretty darn awesome, man. Um, so now, I, I know we just barely touched it. I mean, I, I just really wanted to, because I think it's a great technology. I mean, I really do. And I, I think it's great for us to, 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 to start looking at designing networks this way. If I want to find out more information about this, to really dig into the meat and taters of mm -hmm. it, where would be the best place to go? So I think the best place to start is probably uh, cisco.com slash go slash lisp. Uh -huh. But uh, if you're looking for more detailed protocol specification issues and looking at the lisp community, not just Cisco, but the whole community of lisp in general, you can check out li uh, lisp4.net or lisp6.net if you're using v6. Oh, very cool. Very, very darn cool. All right. Absolutely. Now, I think you even told me that you had a – Facebook page on here? Well, Dude, we do have a Facebook. You guys, we we do have a Facebook group of, uh, uh, about Lisp, but more importantly, Facebook is one of our first uh, uh, beta sites. Oh, and really? So, yeah. So you can get to Facebook over Lisp, right? Just without running Lisp yourself, by reaching uh, www.lisp4.facebook.com. That is pretty darn cool, man. I'll definitely check that out. Well, Daryl, this is great stuff, man. I really do appreciate you coming okay. on awesome. and explain this stuff to us. And uh, look forward to having you on the show and actually doing a little bit more with it because this okay. is definitely groovy. Great. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.